join the revolution starting inside An instrumental part of a gore worldwide A gore worldwide, a gore worldwide Counter economics, agorist strip Black market click, move a quick flip Can't regulate this, agorist strip Black market click, move a quick flip Can't regulate this, agorist Nexus podcast. I've got my great co-host Dag. How you doing, Dag? Pretty good, man. I'm sitting on my recliner made out of uh, gasoline cans, propped up on my ottoman of last year's recliner of toilet paper rolls. Uh, enjoying a nice, uh, a nice margarita here. How you doing? <laughs> pretty good. Uh, probably not that good though. Um, that, that sounds pretty <laughs> nice. So. <laughs> Fortunately, um, I was already stocked up on gasoline before all this happened, so you know it ain't been a thing. <laughs> yeah, of course, right? Like you know, we all know which way it's gonna head. But uh, yeah, um, you know, the reason, you know, welcome to In Game Six, right? But uh, the reason why we do these episodes like this, I think it really ties into agorism, like why we're agorists. Why are we wanting to freely trade with others to avoid giving money to the state, right? Like, why do we do these things? And and I, I think just this, this, you know, for me, it, you know, the reason why I became a libertarian was because of war, but, um, and the reason why I became an agorist is war, but also I think, I think tyranny is, is, you know, a very good reason why, why we're agorist and, and, and why we should exclude the state from every single transaction. And that's why I think these end game episodes tie into, you know, why we're agorist and, and, and what we're doing at agorist nexus. I think, I think they, um, I think it's just important to, to show this and, uh, you know, inspire, it inspires people and, and, and motivates them not to support these tyrannical governments who are enslaving people and uh, basically creating prisons. And um, so uh, we've got a very interesting episode. Um, you know, I, I love all these in-game episodes. Um, a lot, but before we get into it, we want to make sure that we give a huge shout out to our sponsor, PreSearch, decentralized search engine. Get crypto for searching. Don't don't be spied on. You can earn crypto through um, like mining. Uh, they they call it something else, but uh, it basically helps with with optimized searches anonymously. Um, when you mine, they've got something Google doesn't have, which is dark mode. Um, and yeah, they're getting better every single day. So huge shout out to PreSearch for supporting us. Uh, we're extremely grateful and, uh, and we really believe in the project. So yeah, yes. PreSearch. Excellent. Big shout out. So with that said, we want to start out with a climate change article by CNN, um, do you want to do some some reading for us, Doug? Hmm, sure. Uh, so, so yeah, this uh, you said this to me earlier. This one's just uh, just a trip. So, so the um, let's just start with the headline. In the end, everything is about equity. How experts say the pandemic could invigorate climate change action. It's by a young lady named Eva Rothenberg. Oh, and Drew Can Con. I don't know however you pronounce it. Uh, but basically, um, yeah, you know, they're just, they're just laying it out how, um, you know, what we've learned from this last year, you know, how we can apply that to future problems going forward. This enemy does not recognize geopolitical borders. It has the power to wreak havoc on national economies to cost people their livelihoods and their lives. It seeps through the smallest cracks in our social fabric, targeting the poor and the vulnerable among us. Sound familiar? The COVID-19 pandemic and climate change have led to catastrophic fallout on a global scale, necessitating cross-border cooperation, but also cause exponentially more harm to those of lower socioeconomic status. 
So, you know, right off the bat, they're sort of drawing some, uh, you know, some ties between COVID and climate change. You know, um, it's an invisible enemy thing. You know, they're, they're gonna, there's, there's no borders, you know, it's just going to go wherever we all need to work together. You know, I don't know, maybe even if we just had like one big government, you know, maybe things would be would be a little bit better. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's funny how the, they're doing this invisible enemy thing again. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's really convenient because if you got an enemy that you can't see and, you know, um, your imagination not only runs wild, but, uh, but it creates a lot of fear. I can't see this enemy. So, um, you know, and of course, fear is how they, fear is really, you know, um, the biggest way that, that these governments dominate people. So, um, yeah, and that's, and that, that, that's definitely it. And something that, something that is, you know, I don't know, I mean, a virus isn't like abstract, but it's just kind of everywhere, you know, it, it makes for enough like unknowns. So the same thing with like war on terror, right? Where it's like, well, you can't prove that this isn't the case. So same thing like, well, we might not have issues from variants yet, but we could have issues from variants. So because of that, we have to stay locked down or get the vaccine or matter, whatever the fuck, you know? And so it's a, they do the same thing with, you know, anything terrorism, really, well, you, you know, there might be somebody with a bomb in their shoe. So, you know, you have to get molested when you go through TSA, uh, but it just sort of makes where you can't really be, you can't really be against it, right? without looking like you're, you know, crazy or putting everybody else at risk. And that's another big one is they make it, you know, like, okay, there's a lot of things like, let's even say smoking. And I know they, they control smoking a lot, but you know, you can make the argument that like, well, you know, you're only hurting yourself, you know, but what it's something like, um, you know, a virus or climate change or, you know, whatever it's, you know, we all have to participate, you know, for everybody else's safety. So it's really good, good method of control. She, uh, she goes on to say the pandemic has given us a trial run. But the big difference between pandemics and climate risk is that the climate has undergone permanent irreversible damage. And so we need to focus on how we build resilience quickly and effectively on a global scale. Hill's upcoming book, The Fight for Climate After COVID-19, explores the many lessons learned from the world's failures so far. So there's something she's already got a book coming out <laughs> like tying these two together so like i don't know it seems just either planned to me or or a shitty book or she's been working on it since the beginning so this has already been an idea that people have had in their heads either waiting on something like this to happen so they can pounce on it or you know i don't know maybe something a little grander i'm not saying anything either way but you know i'm just saying it don't look great yeah it's either optim it's either opportunistic or more right yeah yeah uh, this kind of concerted cooperative effort, Hill says, we need to curb climate change was perhaps most noticeable in the scientific community's race for a vaccine, a pursuit of normalcy that yielded results in record time. And I think that that sentence there is probably like just about the most important one in the whole thing, right? Yeah, that, that sentence alone is what created this episode. Um <laughs> uh so yeah it's super important you know it's like um okay we've seen good effects from these lockdowns in terms of less pollution um so now you know now, now we not only need to lock down because of of covid but now we need to lock down because of uh the environment and um uh you know, and, it, and it's going to be great for virtue signal, virtue signalers, because um, if you don't want to lock down, then then you want to destroy the planet. The virtue signals are signalers are, are really going to love this, and um, you know, trying to trying to implement something like this, um, like before twenty twenty, would have been extremely difficult because you would have had to try to get people to cancel their flights, get people to stop moving around, um, X, Y, Z. And now it's like, 
well, you, you've already been locked down. You don't have plans um, with the whole COVID situation. So now it's going to be easier to just continue that. Um, there's going to be less resistance. So I think it's, uh, I think it's going to be really, really interesting um, how... Yeah, they, they, they've already got you broken in, right? Yeah, yeah, that too. Yeah, they've already conditioned you. Um, just like they've conditioned you for a police state with, with TSA and, uh, and in, in immigration checkpoints if you're in a... Uh, if you're in a... Uh, one of those areas like California or Texas <coughs> or Arizona. So, um, yeah. So, you know, I think, um, was there anything else you wanted to touch on? Um, this part of the article? Yeah, man. Um, yeah, I do actually. So like, you know, obviously, you know, they're saying, okay, well, look what we can do if we're properly motivated, right? If it's something important enough. And, you know, I've heard like similar arguments for, I mean, other things, even well before COVID, but like referring to like, they'll refer back to World War II, you know, look at these great things we can accomplish in, you know, just a couple of years, you know, if we all get behind it, but it's like, you know, it's like at what cost for what goal, you know, it's like, okay, the government picks one specific thing and we dump all of our resources into it yeah, we better be able to accomplish that one thing, you know, but at what cost? I mean, how many resources do we destroy? How many millions of people die in World War II? You know, I mean, all sorts of terrible stuff. And people look back at World War II with like, you know, I mean, I don't know, is reverence the right word? Like, they're like, oh man, it was so great. You know, I'm like, dude, it was terrible. <laughs> you know, like, come on. But, you know, it's a, it's, you know, kind of like a similar thing here, you know, look what we can do if we just put all of our resources, you know, if we just say, fuck it to, you know, human rights or, you know, whatever you, whatever you want to call that, um, you know, look what we can do. And, you know, and you get on board with something you just can't be against. I mean, you can't be against climate or, you know, can't be for climate change. You can't be whatever. Um, but just like, you can't be like for Hitler, right? If you're against World War II, you must be pro Hitler, you know? So oh, if you're against complete, you know, technocratic state taking over us to save the planet. Like, I mean, you're, you know, you're a bad guy, you know, if you're against that, right? Yeah, you, you want the planet to be destroyed. <laughs> hey guys, quick pause here to tell you about our sponsor, Devault Cryptocurrency. Ticker symbol DVT is a low cap coin with a market cap around 900,000. So there could be room for opportunity here. Not financial advice, but we really like this project. Yeah, the Devault Core Wallet is one of the best I've ever seen. Um, very user friendly, super easy to use with cold staking rewards. So it's like getting interest. Um, they're working on privacy with Terraform, also uh, DeFi to decentralize and replace financial institutions. So go ahead and check them out over at devault.cc and get you a Devault Core Wallet today. Also, be sure to check out the show notes to find exchanges that they are traded on. With that said, let's get back to the show. I hate nature. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just, just like we um, hate, hate roads. Right. Um, yeah. So, so um, this kind of brings us go, to, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, 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 go ahead. I was just gonna keep reading. So if you got it. No, no, no. Uh, yeah. Keep reading for sure. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so now it really gets into the, uh, I don't know, just, really stupid virtue virtue signaling shit like really a lot of this from here on out in the article is going to be um like uh you know why why climate change is you know racist and why you know covid is racist uh so basically she goes on and says that um that uh world faces a sharp and highly problematic vaccine divide where a small number of richer countries have cornered the vast majority of available COVID-19 vaccines, leaving the bulk of the world's population with almost no access to these medicines. We were caught unprepared by the virus, but we've also been caught unprepared by the natural disasters that have been exacerbated and caused by climate change. This is Josh Apte, a professor of environmental science at the University of California, Berkeley School of Public Health. And this is because even in really prosperous societies, we haven't attended to the equity infrastructure that we need in order to protect people. And using those trigger words, 
The pandemic, pandemic has also preyed on underlying economic and healthcare disparities. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention data shows that Black, Hispanic, and Native American people that are affected with COVID-19 are far more likely to be hospitalized than other groups. So um, one thing that I think is interesting here, they're about like, oh, you know, the like the rich countries are hoarding the vaccine. It's like, well, A, they're the ones making it, right? And then B, what I feel like a lot of people just, you know, don't think about is like, okay, this is a vaccine that, you know, whatever we've had for a year. Like, I mean, I don't know how long it takes to make a dose of this, but, you know, to just expect that we can have 6 billion doses ready at once and then have it distributed. Um, the only I feel like refrigerated, you know, like, um, it's just, I don't know, man. It's just, it's just silly. I mean, maybe we just need to put a World War II kind of, you know, effort behind it, but. Yeah, we're all in this together. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that, that's one that I, that I was bothering to say things like that, or, you know, um, you know, they're just, yeah, again, they're just trying to put race on it as well. You can't be against, you can't be against race. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to look like a racist, do you? Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, look, if you don't have anything else on this, I want to uh, switch gears to the gas shortages because. Oh yeah, sure. I mean, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they just go on with the same thing about how, you know, um, a couple of things that Biden's doing is getting a few million vaccines out of other place in the country. So yay him. And, and, you know, it's just basically, let's look at the world without borders. We're all in this together problems, you know, one world government solution, etc. cetera. Mm. Right. So yeah, that's it. <clears throat> um, so with the, um, with the gas shortages, I think it's it's really important to know that ninety I, I you know who knows what the real percentage is but in my mind it's like ninety five percent of the time probably more that there's some kind of crazy incident like this it's it's usually the government um, we we see it time time again they they've implemented a couple of terrorist attacks right and. Um, or influenced crazy kids to do mass shootings, stuff like that. They, they're behind a lot of things. So the gas shortages kind of really tie into this because if you can make moving around more expensive, if they can do that, they can, there's going to be, again, there's going to be less resistance in terms of, you know, some kind of environmental lockdown. If everybody's, you know, if everybody's moving around the planet um, and then governments are like, well, we need environmental lockdown, people are going to be like, well, I'm already moving around the planet. But if everybody's kind of stopped and conditioned for lockdowns and it's super, it's super uh, expensive to travel anyways, um, it's going to be a lot more, um, it's going to make it easier for them to to do environmental lockdowns. You know, this is something that, that I've talked about for years, not on, uh, you know, on social media platforms, like the, um, like all the, the, the Facebook pages I had that had uh, a reach of about a hundred thousand. If you add up all the, um, the followers from all the, the pages I had, I had a reach of about a hundred thousand people. And what I always used to say was that, you know, I, of course I'd be like against, you know, the wall, the wall that Trump had. And what I would always say is, is, and I agree with Ron Paul on this, that, um, the, you know, the, it'll, it will make sure that we cannot leave if, if there's a wall there. People are like, well, we'll just go to Canada. Well, Canada will, will do anything the United States says. So and, uh, you know, there's no, there's real, no country that's more north than Canada. So you can't really go into any other area, but if you can get to Mexico, um, well, the, of course the Canadians are going to deport you too, but if you can get into Mexico, you can get into any South American country and, um, have a better chance of leaving or hiding or, or whatever. And, um, 
you know, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, governments love lockdowns and for all these people who would say, well, well, who's going to go to that shithole? There's actually a lot of Americans fleeing the country right now because they know, they know that, um, this is going to be extremely tyrannical. Um, because the, the U.S. has the resources to do so. I mean, we're a huge police state. We've got more people incarcerated um, per capita than any country on the planet, even China. So. Uh, yeah, big business. Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, so, yeah, that's my thoughts on the, on the gas shortage. I think that um, the CIA or, or some other federal agency is behind it. And, um, and uh, I mean, I mean, who, who, know, who really knows, right? But like, uh, right. But uh, so you're, you're naive to think, we talking. you'd be naive to think that, that this is a, it, that it's not, you know, or, or, or that it couldn't possibly be. I, I, I think that would be naive. Right. So. Yeah. And, you know, it's, you know, I definitely believe that over like some other country. When I first heard about the pipeline thing, I it was, you know, last week I was at my farmer's market and the dude in the booth next to me is like, a, I don't know, he was in the military. He's pretty, you know, like neocon you know, and he, uh, he was sitting there looking at his phone. He said something about the pipeline, you know, and he goes, China's getting ballsy. And I was like, come on, man. I was like, you know, it'd be a fucking CIA before it was China. You know, and he looks at me and goes like, yeah, you're probably right. I was like, okay, cool. Thanks, you know. <laughs> but that was my first thought too, you know. Um, I was glad that he agreed with me. You know, it's like, come on, man, let's not push for war with another country. You just start hating your own government. You know, that's what you should be doing. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, man, it's, um, you know, it's interesting. We were talking about possibilities for things like this um, uh, on a previous end game. Uh, what was it? Klaus Schwab was saying that, that, you know, oh, whatever power outages and, you know, cyber terrorism etc and you know the beautiful thing from like his standpoint of like saying something like that is no matter what it's true even if he doesn't have anything to do even if the government doesn't have anything to do with it like you know there's you know ransomware is like a thing right like that happens so you can just make a blanket statement like that you will be correct one way or another and inevitably it makes you look like you know what you're talking about and it makes the people you're trying to gain control over see you as somebody who they should give power to, you know, or who they should listen to. Um, oh, well, look, he was right about that. That's why yeah, any asshole could have been right about that, you know? Um, so whether, like, it works either way for them. So it's like, you know, it's like beautiful. Um, and I almost feel like this incident is like, it's the, per it's like the perfect amount of, and this could be, I mean, when I say this, just, I mean, you guys know me, I'm, you know, I'm anywhere from, this was just what they said it was to, you know, it was fucking lizard people from outer space doing it. But like, I think this is a really good one because it's like, it's not, it's not bad enough that it makes things too bad where they, you know, they don't think that the government can help them, but it's, you know, it might be bad enough to scare people enough, A, keep a little bit of fear, but scare people enough to really want to give the government more power. Well, we got to stop the cyber terrorism. We got to, you know, we need, you know, yeah, they should, you know, be able to have backdoors and do encryption or whatever the fuck it is they want to get out of this. You know, so it's just, it's a, it's a nice one. Um, it, think, the whole, the whole thing is really, I think we're in, a, I think we're in an era where every, every single thing has, has like at least 10 different agendas uh, attached to it. I think that's kind of, oh, I think yeah. that's kind of, I mean, why not? Right. Like um, get as much done with, with as many as as you know as much ammunition as possible so i think we're in the era of like anything into an op even things don't begin as an op anything becomes an op you know just depending on how they frame it what they're showing versus what they're not what they're what they're you know pumping out there what they're not you know so it's uh yeah it's, it's just so hard dude like anything anything to come out with it's like okay first off is this real and then it's like what's the angle you know, and then I got to try to be smarter, smarter than the Nazi scientists who like developed all this shit, <laughs> you know, when they came back in Operation Paperclip and they know how my, how my mind works better than I do. So then I'm got to wonder, well, am I just thinking what they're trying to get me to think? Oh, it gets tiring. 
Did you want to go into um Oh well, actually yeah, go, go into Project Veritas first. Uh Dag, you you probably know oh. more about that topic than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um so this lines up with our CNN climate change thing, um and pushing fear. But this is just hilarious to me too. So if you guys didn't hear, there's this guy who worked at CNN or works. I don't know if he still does. Um, <laughs> but um, his name's uh, Ch Charlie Chester. He's a technical director at CNN. And basically Project Veritas, um, I'm so curious how they made this like work. But they had some chick who works for them hook up with him on Tinder. She went out with f on five dates with the dude and like filmed him you know, and talk to him. And he was sort of like, you know, bragging, you know, about his position at CNN. He's technical director, right under director. And there's some funny videos and shit, and a lot of cool quotes and stuff. Um, that's worth checking out if you guys are into this kind of stuff. But um, basically, uh, got him to admit things like, yeah, if it wasn't for us, you know, uh, Trump would have won the election and we did everything we could without saying that that's what we were doing to try to make him lose. Um, saying things like, yeah, you know, that's our fear cells, you know, that's our job. We got to keep people worked up. Uh, you know, now that COVID's kind of dying out and Trump isn't president anymore, we don't want to push that, you know, anyhow. Um, now we're really going to start pushing hard into climate change, something that keep people scared. We keep this ball rolling. Uh, and it's just something that you can just do forever. You know, I mean, it's not, it's no, it's unsolvable, right? So they can just do it forever if, uh, if they really want to. And, you know, lots of other uh, interesting things on here. Like, let's see what else. Um, Biden being um, old and geriatric, they were talking about how they try to, like, frame him up. You know, they were trying to keep him off of the news that, you know, they show pictures and videos of him jogging, even if they're not, like, recent. <laughs> you know, But when they talk about him, they have, like, videos of him jogging. They put him in the big, the big cool aviators. So what do you say? That he looks like a um, an active geriatric or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> like oh my god but it's, it's just gross but um but yeah i mean this is them saying it and it is so hilarious too that this guy is like out on a date with his chick and trying to impress her you know um you know getting drinks and stuff and bragging about this nonsense and like if you listen to like the questions that like she asks it's like you'd have to think you're being set up unless you're a total toolbox like i'd be so suspicious like like, I don't know. Like, I, I know that, you know, people say things like that, but, you know, we all kind of run our mouths when we drink. But, like, the shit he says is, like, ridiculous, dude. Like, I can't believe that he would say, like, somebody in that position at that big of a place, you think would just, like, not talk about it that much, like, as much when they're out in public. You know, you just think that that'd be stupid, <laughs> you know? Especially, like, oh, here, say it into my purse. Like... I don't know, but, but it's pretty hilarious. And yeah, it just shows that this is just what they're doing and they just try to whip up fear and not a, not a shocker, but it definitely helps reaffirm, you know, the things that we already know. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it, it's funny how he says that we're going to start getting into climate change and, um, and then they actually do. So, I mean, it's not like, uh, it's not like they don't have this planned out. Right. And, um, and I, I think it's important to note, and we say this a lot, but it's so true that uh, that the CIA has their hands in pretty much every single, you know, uh, media out, you know, mainstream media company um, oh, yeah. with, with Operation uh, uh, Mockingbird. So they, um, it's really like you know, pretty much state-run media. Uh, so uh, oh, yeah, you know, they just put out whatever they want them to put out. Um, it came out after, you know, the Iraq war, but yeah, they were just, they weren't fact checking shit. If intelligence agencies said this is the case, they were just putting it out there, you know? So they're not even doing journalism. Like you yeah. said, it's just fucking state media. Yeah. And of course, like I put, like I point out a hundred thousand times, you can't be a TV station unless the government gives you permission. So just by that fact, yeah, it's fucking all state media, <laughs> you know, because if you say something they don't want, they're not going to let you say it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can get a license without but, uh, their, their permission. So, yeah. um, what's funny too is both these articles that I'm reading came out the same day. They both came out um, April 13th, the one that um that you had sent over, and then this other one. So, like the timing of this is just so perfect too that it's like, hey, here's this thing we're doing, and here's an article like proving that you know, like they didn't even wait or like give it any time. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking great. But I mean, who's gonna like? 
people like us, like people who actually watch CNN, are gonna like see that other one and like they go, like, oh, I'm not gonna watch CNN anymore because I don't know if you watch CNN, you're probably fucking lost anyhow. All right, let's take a quick second to shout out Agorist Acres Seeds. Agoristacres.com stocks a variety of seeds for your garden or homestead. They also have really cool packaging instead of those silly paper envelopes. Buy seeds with crypto, support the counter economy, and become self-sustaining today. Agoristacres offers fast shipping so you can get started right away. Make sure you use code NEXUS10 at the checkout for 10% off of your orders. Also, they will donate a portion of the sale to Agorist Nexus, helping to bring you all the great content you expect. And all right, let's get on with it. Yeah, definitely. Um, so let's um, let's change gears here to the Suez Canal and uh, and supply lines. And I, you know, the thing about the the Suez Canal with the um, the blockage there, I think it was like the Evergreen. They, I mean, I'm not gonna say that it was like planned or anything, or that that they meant to say like "f you." But uh, but when you draw a huge penis before you enter the canal and clog it, um, you know I'm I'm not going to rule that out either. So uh, Dude, when you told me about that first, I was like, shut the fuck up. I was like, no, it didn't. And like I had to look it up. Like I didn't fucking like believe you. I'm like, where are you getting this bullshit? <laughs> so I'm like, oh shit, it did. <laughs> no way. It did. Oh huh? yeah, it's not, it's, it sounds fake, but. Uh, because <laughs> uh, no way that that would be the case the one that clogs it up you know what i mean oh fuck yeah the one and and i mean you don't have instances where um you don't have instances like this really throughout much of history i mean uh the suez canal hasn't been uh hasn't been closed for or, or, you know, not even able to travel through it for, you know, decades upon decades. So it's, it's uh, fixed now, right? The boat's out of there. I didn't even hear anything else about it. Yeah. The ship's out of there, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just, you know, if, if you really want to wreak havoc on a planet and, and make it harder for them to move around, you want higher prices. You want to mess with their supply lines. Like, like it's kind of like the um, the, the Revolutionary War. A, a, a big reason why the U.S. won that war is because they wouldn't go. They, you know, they learned that when they went toe to toe with the uh, with the uh, with the with the Brits, they, you know, there's no way that they could possibly win like that. But what they did was they knocked out supply lines, and that's really how you combat um, an enemy, it's especially if you don't want them to know who you are. You, uh, you know, you you take out their supply lines, and um, but especially a military, it's something like for every like soldier, there's like ten to like fifty people who aren't in combat, who are like support, you know, like, like when you watch like Game of Thrones or something, you see these big armies with like a hundred thousand people, like where they don't show like the, how much food do those people eat? You know what I mean? Like all that shit, like there's so much shit that goes in behind that. So, I mean, you know, to your point, dude, yeah. I mean, if you can fuck with their supply, you know, you make them weak. And I guess that goes both ways. Yeah, absolutely. And if everything's more expensive, you have less travel, which also helps you, with your um with your climate lockdowns you know um and you know on, on the other side of things like from you know like on our you know civilian side of things like what makes us more prosperous and have better lives it's trade you know and the freer the trade the better so you know anything that inhibits that makes all of us worse off you know uh you know there so much stuff in the last year has been so much harder to get or become more expensive. Like things are getting more expensive, not just because, you know, inflation, you know, money printing, et cetera, but just because so much shit's just gotten like, like fucked up. Like, um, um, you know, another one, you know, like lumber is ridiculously priced and it's, I've heard different things. Like I've heard like, Oh, it's, you know, they're 
there are plenty of reasonable explanations for why that, you know, could be the case, but I have heard tales of like, oh, it's actually, they're, they have it and they're holding it. Like the you know, lumber yards are actually full, you know, and they're just, you know, trying to, you know, cartelize and jack up prices, which, you know, I guess is possible too. Um, but the harder they make it for us, the more we clamor for government help. I mean, they've already, they've already, um, you know, uh, uh, given us some appetizers of UBI this year, you know, with, uh, you know, a few stimulus checks and stuff like that. They're, you know, the, the rent more or the eviction moratoriums, the massively increased like unemployment, you know, paying people not to work. I've heard a lot of stories about people not going back to work because they make so much not working, you know? And I mean, honestly, I can only blame them so much, you know, <laughs> it's not my style, but I mean, shit, man, someone's just cutting me checks. So, um, yeah, man, I don't know what, are, I mean, what are they priming us for? Are they just trying to make life hell or is this, you know, you think they're trying to, you know, I almost feel like it's a gearing us towards UBI or something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, UBI gives them a lot. It gives them, uh, more control over the money, more control over the population. That digital dollar going. Yep digital dollar, you can uh, manipulate the currency. You can see every single transaction. Um, it creates, you know, uh, with UBI, you can create dependency. So if somebody does any, anything that you don't like, you can cancel their UBI. Um, so people are gonna be more hesitant to maybe speak out publicly or, or uh, do things that would get their UBI turned off because they may need that to, uh, to survive. So, um, and you know, we've seen governments use everything to their advantage, everything to control or dominate the population. I think can Canada during the lockdowns. And I think we mentioned this in previous end games, they basically said, um, you know, our universal health care. Well, if you don't come back to Mother Canada, you're getting that taken away from you for the rest of your life. And so you had all these Canadians being forced back in, into um, into Canada because they wanted to keep their health their health care. Now, some of them were smart enough to be like, fuck you, it's not even worth it because, I, you know, I'm just going to sit and that sit. Great. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to sit in a line for eight months and, and hope to God I don't die. But um uh, I see somewhere an MRI was like a four year wait or something. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, there's um, some things that, that, that uh, you know, just shows you how, how efficient the, the government is, too. But um, to stay on topic, I think that, that, um, that we're headed into an environment where we're not sure what is going to be reality and what, what is not going to be reality. Um, or it's going to be harder to be able to tell what is reality and, and, and what is not. And um, because it's, it's all going to be, you know, there's going to be so many psyops that, uh, that you're really going to have to evaluate things before you, you know, move ahead. And, um, so yeah. Uh, but, um, I think we should move on to this kind of ties in with what Elon Musk has been saying with the, with cryptocurrency. Um, what was his exact tweet, by the way, I, I commented on it myself and I got quite a bit of, um, likes and retweets. Hopefully a lot of people see it. So, he says, it's high time there was a carbon tax. And I replied, giving government money won't help the environment. And, um, and I mean, you know, it won't. I mean, you know, they're the biggest polluters on the planet. And he also says, he also says something about cryptocurrencies in general. Let me see. Yeah, I saw, um, I saw an article this morning, like first thing about like, he's like, oh, um, we're not going to accept Bitcoin for cars anymore. And I was like, what, they just said they were going to do that. And he said, oh, because of the environment, you know, because Bitcoin's bad for the environment. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Like what, you didn't know this two weeks ago, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, like, why? But I'm not? not saying Bitcoin's bad for the environment. I'm just, you know, 
nothing's changed since he said we're going to take it, you know? Yeah, why now? Uh, four hours ago, he said, to be clear, I strongly believe in crypto, but it can't drive a massive increase in fossil f- fuel use, especially coal. And I think, too, is like, okay, how how can I kind of, like, disrupt the system and make, you know, a lot of money? And the more the more I see of Elon Musk, the more I believe he's one of these scummy billionaires. Because I mean, well, it's hard to be a billionaire and not 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 be a part of the. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. Like, you can't be you. You can't be shooting shit into space without like permission the from the government. Like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're they're not gonna let you shoot shit into space unless you do whatever the fuck they want. You know. <laughs> exactly, and um, and yeah, I mean, you just can't be part of this billionaire club without being, um in this like uh you, you the know. capitalist in me wants to disagree but in the world we live in it's just the truth if we actually lived in like a free market if you were a billionaire it'd probably mean that you did some amazing shit in your life you know and you helped a lot of people but that's not the world we live in so i just can't get on board with the billionaires yeah and we're not saying he's never done anything good because i was a fan for elon for for quite a while i mean i i, I want to like him i mean fuck he does cool shit yeah, 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 he doesn't mean, you know, there's a lot of things I like and, um, and uh, you know, he says witty things and he's a clever guy and um, he's very likable. But, uh, but you know, th- this is just the reality that, that we have to, um, that we have to see that, uh, that he, he may not be the, the person that we think he is. And, you know, so he puts money into crypto and then like, so if I wanted to do it like him, it, I mean, it, it's a real good way. He, he's pumping a coin that has no development, Doge. He buys Bitcoin before, well, okay, so he buys Bitcoin before anybody really knows of it. Probably Doge too. He pumps the crap out of a coin that has no development. That's a joke. And he makes all this money and then he can sit here and push the climate change a, you know, he can sell off some, push the climate change narrative, drop the price, buy back in and, 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 you know, and make even more money. So there's, um, it just kind of shows you like, like you said, you know, you, you didn't know that this was bad. You know, if you think this is bad for the climate now, how, how come you didn't know this two weeks ago when, when you were pushing all this stuff? Do, so the, the story goes, because even before this, I've heard this said that like, okay, so, you know, I mean, even like as much as five years ago, I've heard people complaining about the electricity usage with Bitcoin mining, and that is causing problems or whatever. And of course, regular banking use a lot of electricity too, right? Um, but um, yeah, banks but are I, huge I, skyscrapers that, that uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you want to talk about, you know, uh, electricity use or, or anything that would you know, you use fossil fuels. the The whole entire banking system, I, I think, is uh, a lot worse than uh, but the than power crypto. plants that charge Tesla's cars. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so, so do you think that? Because so, yeah, the story goes that yeah, a lot of this mining is done in China, where they use coal power plants because it's cheap. So that's where they mine the Bitcoin. Um, does it really use that much power? Do you think those stories are accurate? And as a follow up. Is that like typically like a Bitcoin thing? I mean, because Bitcoin, obviously, it's got the, you know, the smaller blocks and blah, blah, blah. So does it just use more power like per transaction? It makes sense that it does versus other coins. All right. That was a few questions. <laughs> Do you have any answers? Um, no, unfortunately, it, I'm not. Uh, I'm not you, really well versed on, on power. power. I'm not well versed on power usage. It's not really something I, uh, I. I've seen some setups for like Bitcoin like mining operations, and that shit does look like it uses some power. But I don't know like what the cost versus whatever. I did hear a story years ago um, that I think is hilarious, where somebody was plugged into one of the Tesla charging stations because you know they're all over, and they had their Bitcoin mining setup in the Tesla car, and they were using you know they were powering it off of the car off of the Tesla charger, <laughs> and. Uh, 
uh, they got in trouble for it or something, you know, because it was like using way too much power. Maybe it was like, it's like a free charger or something. Um, but they were using a Tesla charger to run their Bitcoin operation. Oh, that was pretty fucking, pretty funny. And now it's um, <clears throat> almost a little, I don't know if ironic's the right word, but but after this story, it's pretty, uh, pretty funny. Yeah, there's, um, there's also like a Bitcoin cash tree planting thing. Like, um, let me see here. Uh, Ooh, I can get into that. So like Bitcoin cash is less environmentally hazardous than a lot of these other, I feel, I mean, I don't really believe in, in, in the whole climate. I think warming up the planet is probably pretty beneficial having a greener planet having more co2 is probably beneficial in my opinion because you know plants breathe it so having having happier (laughs) having happier plants that have more that are able to breathe better is is like a, a good thing in my opinion but um uh 95 here this week you shut your mouth (laughs) <laughs> uh let me see here so there's a i forget what is it oh bitcoin cash for trees um so yeah there's a bitcoin cash has some like tree programs um if you look at it and it's real cool stuff but um i don't i don't really want to go into 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 much of that you guys can google it or, or maybe i'll have a uh I'm all over it. I already pre-searched it, Brandon. That's right. That's right. Um, <laughs> you know, you, you say Google for 20 years and... Uh, I, I know. It's so, so habitual. <laughs> it's just a thing you do, you know. Yeah. My well, bad. Um, well, well uh, I apologize. What else we got? Pre-search. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, not much more. Biden put out a tweet today. And saying, uh, I did have the tweet ready. Maybe I accidentally closed the window. Um, Saying, here's what he says. This is what his tweet says. The rule is now simple. Get vaccinated or wear a mask until until you do. The choice is yours. So. What? um, That's insane. Yeah. He put out this tweet. Five hour, uh, five and a half hours ago. So, wow, it's not threatening at all. Yeah, it's not threatening, and you know, especially coming from the uh, quote free unquote um, uh, misleader of the world. So, on uh, the same day that it, I think it was the same day, anyhow, didn't like the CDC say, "Oh, now unvaccinated people don't have to wear masks," in, or vaccinated people, excuse me. Vaccinated people don't have to wear masks inside. Yeah, there's no coordination here, but um, <laughs> you know this you kind of sh- freedoms. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know this kind of shows you. It shows you that uh, that there is going to be a caste system. There's going to be this caste system where if you don't if you don't get injected with whatever we tell you to. Or if you don't do X, Y, Z, you're going to be a second, you're going to be a second race citizen. So you're not going to have the privileges of, of this top tier class that is extremely obedient. So it gives them a lot. It creates division. It creates um, a caste system. It creates, uh, you know, if you if you're obedient and you do what we tell you, you 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 get these treats and um, and the people who aren't obedient, we can now eat more or uh, I want to say identify easier. They'll be easier to identify the people who are not obedient. Um, just kind of, kind of like what they did with the the war on drugs. Everybody who was disobedient to their laws on drugs, they were able to incarcerate. Um, so, you know, there was a lot of things that the war on drugs did for them too. But, um, but, but yeah, now they can they can really try to isolate the people who don't necessarily want to go along 
with what they want. And, um, you know, because they want good slaves who, who will obey. So uh, I don't really have much on much else on that. Do, do you? Um, no, I don't. I have um, some final thoughts if there's nothing else. Uh, yeah, I think that pretty much covers everything. Yeah. Um, you know, you were you were talking to the before we uh, began here, um, or after we started recording, but the beginning of the episode, um, that about you know why we do these episodes and how it ties into agorism, and um, I you know totally agree with with all that. Um, but I think that yeah, these episodes and especially this one in particular with the um, with the shortages and stuff really illustrates one of the reasons that I. I really think that, like, I don't want to say, like, this is, like, why agorism is important, but I think that if you are an agorist and practice it, this sort of comes along with it, but you end up being, you end up being more prepared. We end up having these parallel systems so that when shit like this happens, we're not as affected, you know, and that not only is, makes us have better, healthier, safer lives, it also, I mean, that brings us freedom, <clears throat> you know, that the pipeline doesn't, doesn't serve where I live. But some cities are out of gas because people are stocking up, which is understandable, you know, but when you double supply or I'm sorry, double demand in a day, thing, things are going to run out. I didn't have to stock up because I have a ton of gas already saved, you know, I already had that done, you know, but it's, it's, you know, if you're doing things like growing your own food, you know, being your own factory, you know, if you have a 3D printer or something, just these like shortages don't, don't affect you as much. Like it sucks. Like, yeah, if I got to go buy a two before you know, it's going to be unfortunate, but, you know, I have other options because I've sort of been prepared, you know, ahead of time. And I'm far from perfect in that regard. I got a lot of work to do, but, um, but yeah, I mean, if we have community, you know, if we have, you know, networks of people who are prepared in different ways, when something like this happens, it's not as big of a shock to us. You know, it's almost like we have a battery of supplies and, you know, if the world runs out or has shortages, you know, we can still get by and if we don't have it, you know, hopefully we have somebody we can trade with or, or, or work with one way or another. So, you know, it's, um, you know, that, 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 that's all. It's just, um, that's what agorism means to me. That's the end of my essay. Uh-huh. Now, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I really dig what you said and, uh, you know, it's, it's these parallel systems that we've created for commerce, they, um, they, they make us more resilient too. So. Uh, exactly. And you, like you said, if we have a caste system where we're going to be second tier citizens, this having those other parallel systems give us, us the ability to be those second tier citizens. Fuck it. You know, <laughs> like if yeah, we can still I don't need trade, you. if we can still, you know, if we can still have commerce and we can still communicate, we can still do what the fuck we need to do, then fuck them and fuck their stadiums and whatever the fuck else that you need a vaccine passport to. I want to make a life where I don't need that shit. Yeah, or I want to sell them to... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, exactly. Uh, anyways, I'm not going to incriminate myself further. Um, but uh, yeah, we do want to end this with a quote if there's nothing else. I yeah, mean, let's do it. There is no crueler tyranny than that which is perpetuated under the shield of law and in the name of justice. Charles de Monte... Montecuva? I uh, probably butchered sounds, his name. Sounds pretty French. I'm on board. French or yeah, Italian or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very so... Well. Gorsnex is out. Peace.